Hey, what's up, shitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing some mods to the MGUE N20. This is a 750 watt nominal 1000 watt peak. It's a decent amount of power, but you know, we're gonna do something to get some more power out of it today. But keep in mind, guys, if you do this to your bike, you're gonna avoid the warranty. We're gonna be upgrading the brakes on here from mechanical disc brakes to hydraulic disc brakes. And we are gonna be upgrading the rear shock and we're gonna show you the process of doing that and the before and after results. So guys, if you're interested in doing any of these parts, I bought them on AliExpress. I'll put a link to them. Believe it or not, four piston caliper disc brake kit, front and rear, it's only 50 bucks. So that's very reasonable. But anyways, guys, that's enough small talk. We're gonna go ahead and get right into it. What do you say? The shock that comes on this bike is really stiff and doesn't offer a whole lot of comfort or shock absorption. We're gonna be replacing this with an air shock that offers more adjustability and hopefully a better ride. Not bad. You can see this bike does in fact stop and you have to grab the handles quite a bit. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be doing a shunt mod and in order to do that we're going to have to modify the controller and the controller on the M20 is located underneath the seat here. Keep in mind I am not a professional. I don't know what I'm doing. Please don't try this on your own bike. I'm going to remove both batteries from the bike. One. There we go. There's no more power. Yeah, we have the controller disassembled. There's two little resistors right there. What we're gonna do is add a third resistor that's the same one as these, which is gonna add additional resistance and trick the controller into thinking it's not putting out as much power as it is. And it'll allow this, in theory, to go from the stock, which will peak about 1,000 or 20 amps to about 20, 30 amps. So this should put out about 1,500 watts peak. This will not affect the max speed of this bike because that's determined by your voltage. Here it goes, nothing guys. Let's void our warranties, what do you say? Clearly I'm not very good at this, so leave your comments about my soldering techniques in the comments. What do you think guys? If you want to hire me to professionally solder your electronics, leave me a comment or go ahead and email me at shoottochityt at yahoo.com and I will come to your house and fix your appliances. Look at this, this at that. Factory quality soldering, look at that guys. Man, are you impressed or what? Yeah, check that out, maximum charge. Let's see you do better. Guys, and I think this is one of the reasons why this M20 is such a cool little e-bike because the price of entry is not too high and it has the looks, it looks awesome, and it's a great platform for modification. And if you wanna order an M20, feel free to use one of the links in the description below. Helps the channel and you get a cool e-bike in the process. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give this bike to a subscriber. We have the controller put back together. I'm gonna to let the batteries charge for a little while before we give this thing a shot. And while we do that, while those batteries are charging, let's go ahead and change out this rear shock. That's gonna be an easy one. Take off this rear shock here. This should be pretty straightforward. And if you notice here, I got the DNM A0-8RC. This is the same rear shock that comes on the Wired Freedom and the Five Star e-bike. I was really impressed with the performance of this shock. The adjustability is actually really noticeable and you can set the air pressure for your weight so you can tune in the suspension. This HLT100 that comes on this bike is non-adjustable and it's very stiff. So I'm just not a fan of it at all and we're gonna swap it out for this. Okay, it's not bad at all. The rear shock has been removed. This is a 230 millimeter shock on this version, but I did see another video where the guy replaced it on his M20 and it was a shorter shock. So measure measure before you replace the shock on your M20. I think there's been a few revisions. 230 millimeters is right around nine inches. You're gonna wanna make sure this goes in an orientation where you can still get to the air pressure. So put this with this facing down. Oh, get it lined up. Pretty simple, all right guys? We have the shock in place. Now we're just gonna bolt it back in and then set it to our weight settings. You really only need a Rowan wrench to uh, swap out the rear shock. All right, now for the brakes. This one's gonna take a little while. The good thing is I believe the new brakes come 
pre-bled. And for reference, uh, all these upgrades cost me, the shock was 120 bucks. This brake kit was 50 bucks. And the resistor pack I got on Amazon was about $10. So talking about $200 total, and you get a quite significant upgrades for the M20. Part of the fun of bikes is, you know, individualizing them and making them your own. Just continue our disassembly now. Just enough. It looks like there's just enough slack to get it off there. And we have one brake handle off, guys. One of the really cool features of this brake kit is the fact that it works with the stock brake sensors. I could have opted to get 180 millimeter rotors, but I kind of went lazy, guys. And honestly, I didn't know exactly which adapter to get, so I didn't do it. 180 millimeter rotors are shockingly cheap though. I believe you can pick up a set for like 15 bucks on Amazon. Here we have the front, front caliper and the cable has been removed. So here we have it guys. The brand is e-bike motion, but check out the quality on this. This is nice. Four caliper pistons. These are some pretty beefy brakes right here. 50 bucks from AliExpress. Can you believe that? The nice thing is, a lot of the stock parts manufacturers are in China, so you can buy a lot of the same parts that come on these bikes right from this manufacturer for way less than you can get them in the United States. The only downside is, is a lot of the times the shipping's pretty slow. This took about 10 days to show up, but if you're not in a hurry, definitely check out AliExpress for your parts. Okay, we have the handlebars ready to put the new brake handles on. And I'm just now realizing something, guys. This brake setup is configured to be motorcycle style where the front brake is on the right and the rear brake is on the left. Of course, you could swap that if you want to remove the hoses and re-bleed everything. But uh, look at me. Do I look like I want to do that? I don't. So we're just going to have to get used to it. That also means at this point, I'm kind of rethinking my life's priorities and why did I start doing this? But you know what, guys? It's one piece at a time. All right, now this part, I hate doing this. Oh, come on. I didn't even, this is. Okay, I'm not even gonna question it. You probably wanna finalize your cable routing before you get to this point. Uh, ask me how I know that. Ask me why my thumb's bleeding in the process. Okay, so you wanna just snug these bolts on here and I'll show you how to align your calipers here. And then what you're gonna do is you come up to the brake handle, squeak, squeeze it a couple times, and then hold it really tight, and then you're gonna tighten down these caliper bolts. This keeps the caliper centered onto the brake rotor, and when you let go, there should be enough space in there so it's not rubbing. Let's see, what do you guys think? You think it worked? You think it worked the first time? Nice. Now it's time to do it for the rear. It could also be a sensor. No respect right. at all, huh? Spacer here. And I'm gonna mount this right down. It's as easy as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're almost there, guys. Brakes installed. Shunt has been modded. Rear shock has been upgraded. I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up all these wires and then we'll set the air pressure. And then we're gonna go ahead and see if we actually need the brakes because if the shunt mod doesn't work, this bike's not gonna move very fast anyway. So what do you guys think? You think it's gonna work? Do you think we're gonna get 1500 watts out of this? Put your guesses below, down there. Down there, on the floor. Put the batteries back on. All right, guys, we got the bike all back together. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if this shunt mod worked. Oh yeah, that definitely worked. Check it out, guys, 31.4 amps. So. The shunt mod indeed worked, so 48 volts times 31.4 amps is what the power level on this bike is. Now, it's time to set up this shock and uh, we bed in those brakes. What do you say we do that now?
right away I just noticed it feels much torquier now and I can get up the hills without struggling. Acceleration feels better, but overall, it's after about, you know, the top speed's not really gonna change. 25, 26, I certainly have an easier time getting up there. Keep in mind, I'm 240 pounds. And man, this rear sh made a huge difference. This bike is still firm overall because the seat's not very comfortable, but this, this rear shock, it gives a lot of travel. And I got this one for 120 bucks on AliExpress. That significantly softens up the ride in the rear of this bike. So, what do you say guys, let's test these, let's test these brakes out. Oh man, these things grab. Really good. I can't believe for 50 bucks you can get yourself a, a four piston brake setup for a bike. I wish you could get parts this cheap for cars, that's for sure. I'll try and give you a first person view of how well these brakes work now. 20 miles an hour. Man, these things stop. Definitely transforms the ride of this bike. And overall, I spent about 200 bucks on parts. And uh, it's money well spent, if you ask me. <laughs> Steps here. Having an e-bike out in the country is a little different than having it in the city. We don't have to lock our bikes up here, but we do have to tie them up so they don't run off on us. You can see the devastating effects of climate change right through here. Right there, especially right there. Climate just changed that whole thing. When you buy an electric bike, guys, you officially become part of the solution. We're saving the world. So I said I'll be giving this bike away to a subscriber. And, oh, there's a subscriber now. Okay, it's all there. Okay, here's your bike. Oh yeah, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.